This is a book from the 1800s. I actually had to order this book from England, um, and it took a while to get, but I did get it. And it's just absolutely amazing. I can actually smell the book from where I'm holding it. That's how old it is. Infinitesimal Calculus by Lamb, Cambridge University Press. This book is absolutely amazing. Let me show you some of the cool stuff I have found inside this book. There you can see the book is signed January 1898. That is just ridiculous. I mean, none of us were alive then, if you think about that, right? I mean, none of us. We didn't even exist when this person, you know, signed this calculus book. There's the inside cover, an elementary course in infinitesimal calculus by Horace Lamb. The really cool thing about this book is you can actually read it and understand it. I mean, it's calculus, right? You can actually read this and actually learn math, a math that was written, you know, hundreds of years ago. So I found this inside the book, and this paper is really thick. I wish you could feel it with me so that you could see what I mean, but it's not like regular paper. And you notice there's a stamp there, and I don't know if you can read it. I'll try to hold the camera still. It says Dalton Hall, Victoria Park, Manchester. So it's like special paper with a stamp on it. And then whoever had this book uh, was working through some type of calculus problem. I, I don't know uh, what this is. But check out that handwriting, right? I mean, just really, really wicked handwriting. And I guess, I mean, this was written, I think, in the 1800s. If you look at the writing here and rewind the video and compare it to the guy's signature, I'm pretty sure that this is his work, this calculus work from the 1800s. I mean, just absolutely ridiculous. Let's look inside this book so you can see that, like, it's actually understandable. I don't know if you can appreciate how thick this book is. I wish you could feel it with me, but like my hand has a hard time going around. It's really, really thick and it's short and thick. It's not like those big, um, let me zoom out so you can see. It's not like the Stuart book for calculus where it's like all wide and thick. It's just a, a short, you know, fat little thick book, uh, but it's really thick. It's unusually thick for, you know, the size. It's like short and thick, kind of a strange shape. Uh, for, for a math book. This copy also appears to be in quite good condition. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, when I bought this, I was looking for one that wasn't falling apart. So if you try to get an old edition, that's something to look into. Make sure you read the description on the condition. A lot of times when you get books uh, that are this old, they're falling apart. You know, I have books that I've bought and they're falling apart. For example, my copy of uh, Dumb It and Foot uh, the Abstract Algebra book by Dummett and Foot. the pages are coming out, and that's not even that old. So when you go back and you, and you try to get really old books, always read, you know, about the condition. And the price varies with the condition. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, if you try to get this book now, um, you'll have a hard time finding it inexpensively. Like, uh, you know, if you look for a copy that's in, like, really good condition, it'll probably cost a bit of money. And this, this copy, just to show you, it's signed 1898, but this copy is actually from 1897, and I don't know if this is the first printing. Uh, I'm not sure. Here you can see the binding in the back of the book. It looks like there's some tape there, like maybe the book was repaired at some point. Uh, I don't know. I'm not an expert on like, you know, binding books and all of that stuff. Um, I just like math books. I'm just a, a, a guy who likes math books. And, you know, the book does have an index too, so you can look stuff up. And it should have most of the stuff you cover, you know, in a Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3 course. It's just presented in a different way because it is infinitesimal calculus. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different. The table of contents is huge, so I'm just going to, like, quickly film each page so you can see all of the contents. This is continuity. Tons of topics. More topics here. Chapter 2 is on derived functions. Chapter 3 is on applications of derived functions. And again, going quickly, feel free to pause the video if you want to look at the topics. Chapter 4 is derivatives of higher order. Here we have some integration. Here's some more stuff from the table of contents. It just keeps going and going and going. There's so much more. So I'm just going to quickly just glance at all of it so we can take a look inside this book so I can show you that you can actually read this book and understand it. Talks more here. There's some differential equations, all kinds of stuff. Then it goes on to series. It's like a regular calculus book. It has all of the regular calculus.
calculus topics. This is just beautiful. Property of a continuous function. If phi of x is a function which is continuous from a to b, inclusive, and if they have opposite signs, phi of a and phi of b, there must be some value of x between a and b for which the function is zero. That's basically the intermediate value theorem, right? But they're calling it a property of a continuous function, and they're explaining it so, so well. I mean, what a beautiful book. Uh, totally worth getting if you can actually find a copy. I think that this book might be so old that it might be free. I think that happens sometimes with really old books. Like, they just, they're just so old that like nobody owns the copyright. And so since this is considered somewhat of a classic or a classic, you can actually get it online for free. I am not sure. Uh, I will try to find a copy on Amazon and leave a link in the description so you can check it out. These are some of the exercises. You're asked to prove all of these hyperbolic identities. That's pretty cool, you know? Um, I, I really like this book. I feel like if you want to explore some old book, this is a good old book to choose to explore. Uh, mainly because it's so old and it just smells good. If you can get an old copy of this book, uh, it's totally, totally worth it. Even a new copy or like a reprinted copy, just to see you know, how things were written and how they were presented. I, I feel like the language used in this book is very, very different from you know, the language used in books today. I mean, it's like a whole different animal. Not bad for a book from the 1800s, right? I mean, they have three-dimensional pictures in the book. So, uh, you know, the author did a really, really good job uh, in creating this book. I mean, I don't, I don't know much about Lamb. Uh, I should have done some research on him before uh, making this video, but honestly, I was just looking through my books, and I, I saw this book. I thought, hey, wait a minute. I forgot I had this book. Uh, it's just been sitting there. And so I started reading it, and I worked through some of the exercises. Um, I had looked at this before a couple a couple weeks ago, and I kind of just you know read through it, uh, did some problems, spent about an hour uh, you know perusing it, and I'm really really happy with this book. Here's another look at some of the exercises, so you see how how it works. And I guess it's a good book for exercises if that's what you're looking for. I mean, lots of books have good exercises. Um, some of the ones in this book are kind of unique. There's a lot of proofs. Uh, again, very different. You will find things in this book that you probably won't find in newer books because it's such an old book. I mean, this is you know written over over a hundred years ago. Here it talks about curvature. So if you had a calculus three class, um, you can actually read through this and probably understand most of it, um, and you'll actually get something from it. So I actually spent some time uh, reading this chapter uh, because I thought it was cool. I'm like, oh, curvature, I teach that you know, in, in my Calc 3 class when I teach Calc 3. And a lot of the formulas in this book were very similar to the ones taught in Calc 3. It's just the notation you know, is, is a little bit different, but it's the same thing. you know. As, as they say, there's nothing new under the sun, but uh, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> uh, you know, new things are created, but you can still find a lot of common things. So if you know Calc 3 and you know curvature, uh, looking at this is kind of interesting. The same is true for the entire book, right? If you know calculus and you look at this book, you'll be like, oh, wait a minute, that's, that's something I know from my Calc 1 class, or that's something I've seen in, you know, Calc 2. It's really, really cool when you find, like, the math that you're learning in your classes in a book that's over a hundred years old. And not everything is super hard, and this actually has answers. Notice how it says, verify the following differentiations. So it gives you the function and it wants you to verify the derivative. So you basically have the answer, so you can actually go through and you can work through the problems and check your answers. So you will get something from this book. Um, I think if you can get this book inexpensively, uh, it's totally worth getting. And if you can get it free, even better. Again, I, I somehow have a feeling, and I hope I'm not wrong because I keep saying this, but I think you might be able to uh, download this book just because it's so old. I mean, this is almost like, it's a classic. It's like a work of art. The appendix is really, really weird. It's got these really weird number tables. You have to remember that this book was written before calculators existed. I mean, <laughs> if you showed a calculator to someone from the 1800s, they'd probably freak out. Um, you know, it's just unheard of. Uh, you know, 1800s, this is, I think this is before cars. I don't even think cars existed, I'm not sure. It's a long time ago. Here's some more tables of numbers. Really, really interesting. I haven't really spent any time uh, examining these. Um, but really, really cool just, just to see 
you know, how things were done before, uh, before calculators. Again, the book is Infinitesimal Calculus, and this is the one by Lamb, and this is a classic book. Um, the reason I got this book, by the way, is because uh, someone left a comment in a video a long time ago, and they said that this book is like the book on infinitesimal calculus, and I should try to get it. So I spent a lot of time uh, trying to find this book. It took a lot of work, a lot of Googling, and a lot of searching um, to get to get an old copy uh, like this one. Again, my copy came from England. It took forever uh, when I bought it, and I forgot where I bought it. I forgot what website I got it on. It might have been eBay. It might have been like Bookfinder. I, I don't remember where I got it. I just know it came from England and like it was wrapped really fancy and it took a long time to get it. Actually, it might have been eBay and I think the seller uh, did not ship to the US and I had to email them in order to get the book. That might have been the case. Uh, that that's, could have been it. I do remember having to do that. And so this is a possibility. I might have had to get it off eBay and like private message the seller and stuff just to get it shipped to the US. So a hard to find book if you're trying to get an old copy, but I think again, if you're trying to get just a free copy or maybe like a new reprint, it might be a little bit easier. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to uh, like, share, and subscribe. And I just really wish, uh, I just really wish you could smell this book with me. It's just amazing. Over a hundred years old <laughs> of, of book smell. Keep doing math. Good luck.